in February of this year, I took an epic, more than 600 mile road trip from Bellingham, Washington to Redding in California. That's over 2,000 kilometers over three days. If you haven't seen it already, I'll put up the link here. Watch it, it was awesome. So over three days, the first day we went down south and we decided to stick only to the supercharger network and only to the 250 kilowatt chargers that they have installed pretty much in, in, in the most important locations along the route. And as you can imagine, um, the experience of charging was flawless. Then on the way back, we decided to switch things up and um, I purchased a CCS adapter. If you don't have one, I really suggest you should get one. I have a link in the description. I bought an A to Z made in Canada, really good quality. So we decided to come back and use Electrify America um, as the charging um, provider just to see how it is because, you know, a lot of people have mixed opinions about Electrify America. You can go on PlugShare and see all the negative reviews and so forth, right? So I wanted to see for myself how it was and uh, see how it would charge a Tesla with a CCS adapter. So that's what we decided to do on the way back. And obviously it wasn't as good as charging on the supercharger network, but it was okay. It wasn't so bad. However, after I posted the video, I got a lot of comments and people saying, why didn't I just charge on the supercharger network? Would it have been cheaper, more expensive to charge on Electrify America? So this is the point of the video today. I'm currently driving to Langley in British Columbia and we have a semi new V3 location that just recently opened up a V3 supercharger. So I'm going to charge this car and I'm going to document the entire charging experience. So I will give you guys a full charging curve for the supercharger and then I'm going to do the same on Electrify Canada, which is pretty much Electrify America just in Canada. They use the same um, infrastructure, the same charging equipment and everything else. The best thing is that even though Canada has already approved, Transport Canada has already, not, not Transport Canada, um, Measurement Canada has already approved kilowatt hour billing for um, EV charging. Um, Electrify Canada and uh, Tesla superchargers are still by the minute. So we're on equal playing uh, field right now. And I'm just curious to see, number one, what type of speed I'm going to get and what the curve looks like between the two charging systems. Number two, how much does it cost? And number three, if you're a Tesla owner, should you be using um, Electrify Canada, Electrify America or any other fast CCS charging options? So that's what we're gonna try to find out. And I'm curious because I don't know. You know, my experience was pretty good. But today, let's go a little bit deeper and actually see some numbers, see some charging sessions, and decide if it's worth it or not. So now we're preconditioning, we're gonna be there soon, and then the supercharger session will start. I'm curious, and I'm interested to find out which one's gonna be better.
It's not a surprise really that the Tesla Model 3, even in the standard range plus trim like mine is, charges pretty good on a supercharger. Um, you can't beat the, uh, the ease of use simply by driving up, plugging in and charging, as well as the charging speed itself being pretty quick and you're able to get back on the road that much faster. So now let's look at the other side of things and see how it is charging on a CCS capable charger. And for this test, we're gonna drive all the way to Squamish in uh, British Columbia, Canada. That's on the way to Whistler. And there is a 350 kilowatt capable uh, charger through um, Electrify Canada. So we're gonna use that one and we're gonna compare not only the charging speed, charging curve, but also the cost, the final expense for going from 10 to 80%. So we'll see if it's cheaper to do it on a supercharger or if it's cheaper to do it on a CCS capable charger like the one from uh, Electrify Canada. And obviously, is it gonna be any quicker or maybe even slower? We'll see how it goes. And for that, we're gonna use one of my favorite uh, CCS adapters made by a company called A2Z. It's a Canadian company. I like to support local. The build quality is much better than anything available from Tesla or any other third party vendors out there that you can find on Amazon. And you get really, really fast charging speeds with that adapter. And I've tested it on a three, on a Y, on road trips to the US, here in Canada as well and it works flawlessly. So I'm gonna put a link in the description of the video where you can go and find out more about um, the CCS adapter from A to Z. But okay, let's get to Squamish. Uh, let's uh, plug this car in and see how it does on a CCS capable charger.
from the Tesla V3 supercharger session charging curve graph, we can see that there is this initial burst of speed at the beginning. So we're getting 172 kilowatt right off the start at 10%. Um, and then uh, we are moving slowly down into um, the hundreds at minute six. Um, and then obviously after minute six, it kind of evens out. And then we have this slow decline up until the very end, up until 80%. Obviously at um, minute 21 and 22, we're dropping below 50 kilowatt um, with the supercharger. So that would be a good time to unplug and go to the next one. No point staying more than that. So if you're driving a Tesla Model 3 standard range plus, um, like this graph is designed for, um, 21, 22 minutes, plenty enough. Uh, and then you can go to the next one if you need that much charge. If you don't need to have that much, you can just go, you know, up to halfway and then you're good enough to go to the next uh, supercharger. We are now looking at the Electrify Canada 350 kilowatt CCS charging session. And this one paints a very different story. We start off at 10% uh, with 120 kilowatt. Then we quickly move up to 126, then 129 at minute three, which then is sustained up until minute five. And then we see a gradual decline. So at minute eight, we're already below 100. Then uh, steadily we keep dropping and dropping and dropping until we reach 50% uh, at minute 21, and then we're below 50 kilowatt. Uh, at minute 22, which is similar to what we saw with the V3 supercharger. And obviously this one is a minute longer because the session was a minute longer. But overall, um, two charging sessions and very, very different stories. So now let's uh, have a look at the combined um, charging curves and see what the differences are. Now we see the two sessions combined. So in red, we have the supercharger and in green, we have Electrify Canada with the 350 kilowatt CCS. And as you guys can see very clearly, that Tesla burst of speed at the beginning where we were reaching those 170 plus speeds is, is much, much bigger here and more prominent than it was before. Electrify Canada starts lower, but then they start meeting up um, around minute 11 I would say they're pretty much equal. There's a small dip there at a minute 26, uh, 24, um, where Electrify Canada goes a little bit below what the supercharger was outputting. But much of it is pretty much the same, just the beginning. Up until, yeah, minute 10, minute 11, that's where the differences lie. Um, and it's interesting to see that even though these curves look very different at the beginning, the final um, time that it took to charge from 10 to 80 it's pretty much similar. We have a minute difference. And then I'll give you guys a summary um, with prices and actual charging times for both. In terms of the timing between charges on the Tesla network and Electrify Canada, there isn't much difference. It's only a minute and four seconds in total. So that's really not an issue for me at all. Um, now, just let's look at the cost. So on the Tesla network, we paid $15.65 from 10 to 80, which then translates into $11.61 US. For Electrify Canada, we have $13.92 Canadian, which translates into $10.33 US. So again, the difference isn't huge, but um, I do have to say that I have the Electrify Canada uh, Pass Plus membership, which is the same in the States, that gives me a discount on charging. And it costs four bucks. And that's something that I would suggest if you ever go on a road trip and use the CCS network. If you do more than one charge, um, it's worth to get that. So if I didn't have that membership, then I would have paid slightly more. So you have to take that into account. So I would say charging time is pretty much the same. Costs are the same. So when should you be using? And is it worth to get a CCS adapter? And I would say it's in those moments when you are not able to charge on the supercharger network or you find yourself in an area with only a V2 or a V1 system where the charging time is much longer because on the V2, for example, if you're sharing the stall with someone else, you're only getting half the power. 
and it can prolong your charging. So I would say it's always good to have one, as you guys can see. There isn't much difference charging on the supercharger or on the um, CCS network. So I would say keep it in the car, have it with you. You never know when you're going to need it. And it's always another thing that you have in your toolbox that can help you charge if you find yourself in a spot where there is no other way to charge except on CCS. Okay, so I hope you found this uh, video uh, informative. It was certainly for me. It was something that I wanted to do for a while now. So if you like this kind of content, you like this video, please um, think about subscribing. It really helps the channel. Like the video if you liked it. And I will see you on the next one. All right, take care. Thanks. Bye.